So today is one of those really weird days here on the homestead. It's Cornish Cross Harvest Day, sort of the end of the saga for them. This one was the beginning. I say it's weird because uh, everybody's a homesteader until it's time to do some homestead stuff. You go out, you go to Homesteaders of America, and then you know, since the pandemic and this and that, and people buy a piece of property out in the country and say, well, I'm a homesteader now, what do you do? Well, I grow tomatoes and I make soap. Well, I'm about to cut the heads off of things that I grew since they were one day old. And while it's not my first batch, and it's certainly not gonna be the last batch, it doesn't really get any less weird on harvest day. The day in and of itself is weird. I don't know if you get used to it. You see folks like uh, Pete over at just a few acres farm. Uh, butcher day, you try to absorb it like it's the any other day, but it's weird, admittedly. Uh, sad, not really, but weird. There's no denying that. Uh, the two Cornish crosses are going to uh, be dispatched. Uh, I'm really trying to do this without humor, but it's weird talking about it. City kid still talking about it, it's still weird. Uh, we have, you can hear it in the background, we have the scalder going, the defeather up here, and uh, it's almost time. The water's almost up to temperature and uh, in the scalder, and then it'll be time for them to go. Uh, it's not gonna be graphic. I'm not actually gonna show you guys. Uh, I will have the microphone on so you may hear stuff. We'll see how that goes in the edit. Uh, the Cornish Crosses have been out of food for about oh, 15, 18 hours by now. I've learned that it makes things a lot cleaner uh, poop-wise. Uh, that being said, all the tools and implements are ready. Knives, rags, the lighter has nothing to do with anything. The uh, pusher downer. Everything's gotten a light coat of uh, bleach and then wiped down again. The defeathering machine, ready to rock and roll. And a regular old, I use it, just a regular old turkey fryer crab boiler. We are in Maryland after, a while, after all, uh, as a scalder. So we're about 120 degrees or so. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, we want to get between 150 and 200 to make things, to make the feather removal a lot easier. I think in, easier is a, a term uh, for two ways. The first one, you know, obviously the physical removal of the feathers easier, but also once the feathers come off, it looks like something you would get in like an organic market, maybe an Asian market because the head and feet are still on, but it just looks like food at that point. It's a little bit easier to kind of do the business once the, uh, once the feathers come off. So yeah, we got about 10 degrees to go. I'm gonna go put my apron on, get out of this coat because we started off really, really cold this morning in the teens and now it's up to, I don't know, 40 some odd degrees. So uh, time to take my coat off and get suited up and get started. The scalder's up to about 170. That's where I like to, uh, that's where I like to do it. To do the actual dispatching, I use a brand new fresh number 10 scalpel choice of every TikTok dermatologist, but it is sharp and we want to reduce any weirdness that's going to happen. They could be quick. They're going to go into the cone that's right over here, get coned up, go into the cone, and then come out as food. I like the cone, puts them upside down, hugs them, chills them out. Relax, 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 relax. Even when you put them upside down, their blood rushes to their head. They start getting lightheaded and they don't flop as much. Go ahead, head in there. Pull their, pull his head through the cone. Man, you things are, you are fat at that. I don't mean to insult you right before go time. They are rotund. They are of weight, I should say. Right? Being more respectful. Thank them for their sacrifice. Quick shot. And let them go. So their blood pressure almost instantly drops. He's pretty much gone. 
and then the nerves take over. Relax, bud. It's over. You know, it's not uh, my job or the intention of the channel to show the realities of food or anything like that, but this is the reality. This is where your food comes from. And we as humans need to eat. So we have choices. And my choice is to provide homegrown food. So I decided to record this instance not to be salacious or, or, or exploitative. Ooh, ooh, look at this. But this is the reality and it's weird. So while he exanguates, exanguates, sandwich, I don't know. Let's clean up our hands. Now usually we do oh, 15 or so in a day and it's generally an all day process, but this is a small batch just for parts. So this should only take probably less than an hour. I think it takes longer to set up than it does to actually do anything. Now we dip them in here for a little while. Ooh, 30 seconds maybe. My indicator is when the yellow skin comes off the feet. It's going to be temperature and bird dependent. But the better you do with your soak, the easier it is for the feathers to come off in the machine. Water is the key to this. Keep that water going and uh, it goes nice and easy. Now we look like food. Not, uh, not dissimilar to what you would see, like I said, in like an Asian market. I think they take the heads off there, which is fair. I don't know how much I'm gonna show. Of this, but. This is the way that I do it. He probably could have hung for a little longer, but I want to get this wrapped up. I go after the crop next. Good and empty. He didn't eat. Like I said, we were out of food for, oh, not, not quite 24 hours. Plenty of water though. So that helps to make things clean. A little slit in the back here. Get into the pocket without cutting anything important. People have questions. Oh, you, you do that, what's it like, and blah, blah, blah. Well, the actual dispatching, to me, is more difficult than anything else because this, if you've ever gutted a fish, it's the same thing. It's the same thing as gutting a fish. Pull that through, come right around here, do the business end. I take the Pope's nose off with everything. Going to take care not to cut the bile. Sack, livers, and heart. And the rest goes to fertilizer because we've established 50 million times that nothing goes to waste around here. Get rid of the last bit of the unpleasant bits. One more scoop for the lungs, which is arguably the hardest part because they're up in between the ribs.
Okay. Beautiful. Oh, let's get some of this trachea out. Next skin there, beautiful, beautiful. Just like you'd see in the store. Now we'll put them in the bucket, do the next one, be on our way. Oh, that water's freezing cold. Nice cold water. It's all right, relax, relax. See all the blood rushes to their head, stop fighting. All right, relax. Be over in a second. Sometimes I wonder, like, what if my daughter sees this? Is she going to think more or less? Do you eliminate that by taking it over to a processor and paying 3 or $4 a bird to just have them do it? I don't know. I really don't know. Like, thank you for giving us good food, but... Why'd you have to do it? I don't know. The homesteader, the, the farmer's dilemma. Is it even a dilemma? Does it get easier? After a while, they just, just another day, like uh, tomatoes, going to dig out the potato day. I don't know. Leave a comment down below. Tell me if I ever, I'm not gonna feel like a serial killer, poultry serial killer. Like I said, weird day. Right in the right in the screen protector. That machine does a nice job. Very little damage, a little bit sometimes. And even though there's ducks over there, that machine cannot do the ducks. It doesn't have the horsepower to do the ducks. It's a lot of hand work. And fun fact, that's why we still have ducks. Because I don't feel like that day is even worse. Duck day is even worse. So we don't even, I don't even do them anymore. I'm sure there are people out there that are cringing. Joel Salatin, you can do it in two seconds, less cuts, less whatever. But this is what we're looking for. And this is what we got. It's also how I do it. So, uh, well, what are we at, 20 minutes on the clock? 10 minutes a bird? It's not too bad. And boy, I'm, I'm really happy with the size of them. I know I had my doubts about Cornish crosses and, and this and that, but uh, there's a reason they are what they are. Those are very, very big breasts. 
Uh, I'm going to clean up out here. Like I said, the setup and cleanup takes way longer than the actual chicken business. Uh, then I'm going to go inside and break them down. Are we going inside? Are you guys coming inside? I don't know. So that's it for now. Because you're just going to end up getting sprayed with water. And so now we're getting into the uh, I've never done this part part. I mean, I've cut up a chicken before, but I think I've cut up a chicken before. Get my rinse off with some fresh water. Voila. We'll just edit out the part where I cut myself. I didn't really cut myself, I poked myself. So what's the after action report? Pretty good. Would I do Cronish Crosses again? I don't know, maybe. Like I started the other video off with, never say never, but there's a lot of meat here. Um, for being six weeks old, or excuse me, a bit, I think they're about eight weeks old. There's a lot of meat here. And now I see, um, am I a Cornish Cross convert? I don't know fully, uh, but disassembly was pretty good and straightforward. They, uh, I don't know, they went out without a fight, but uh, the output was, seems to be worth it. Um, all that being said, I got a couple, every time you do it, you get a little better. I think 170 is a little hot on the scalder. Uh, I have a little tiny bit of graying on the breast, so maybe drop down to 160, spin them up that way. Maybe I just remembered, misremembered from other times that I could swear it was 170. I don't know. Uh, the plucker performed flawlessly as usual. Uh, cleaning up takes forever. Uh, overall, win. Mama wanted parts. We gave her parts. Not a lot of people want to see how the sausage gets made these days, but you want to have a connection to your food? This is it. That's it. I have nothing left. The carcass is... Oh, what do we talk about? You want to talk about waste? The offal, the inedible things are going into the garden. I'm going to do that. You guys don't have to see that. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just me digging a hole. The carcasses, uh, uh, the carcass of what's left of the two birds are in the stock pot. And we're going to stock those up. No pun intended. What is that? 12 quarts. So we're a stock family. Uh, so that is another benefit. I'm, I'm actually kind of excited for that. So I'm going to throw in some herbs and some vegetables and let that uh, boil away for the next, uh, I don't know, couple days. The longer the better. And uh, so really nothing is going to waste. The bones. The bones will be about the only thing that are, are wasted. So in that regard... I feel good about it. I still feel good about it. I don't need to convince myself. This is not the first birds I've done. It's just the first birds I've done on camera. I'll get better at it each time, breaking down. Maybe I take a butcher class or something. That Actually, ever see them TikToks of those guys that do it? All comes with practice. I've never actually broken one down on the same day. Uh, so I have a lot to learn. But that's what this is all about. It's learning. If it was easy, it would be work. This isn't work passion project. I'm rambling. Good day. Uh, what? I don't have any wise words. It's just weird. Uh, son of a bitch. All right, let's go. Take the long walk. Don't look over here. Look, look somewhere else. Look over there. Oh, look, there's two birds. All right, so the scalder is up to stop starting every sentence with all right, so 